from the first minute I saw the Hudson, I was just like, I want that truck. I want to do that truck. The fenders are perfection. We don't want to mess with those at all. Exactly. <laughs> I feel like a glove. Damn, Bruce, you got that bed ready to come off, huh? Man, that is cool. Smells good, too. Oh, you should have seen the whole thing before we started, DJ. We gotta get you you. sign it so I can get a Not good sure price at the market. <laughs> <laughs> What's that boat? Oh wow! This thing's really clean. What in the? Do I gotta? What do we, we gotta paint this? Woo! Damn man! I'm Joe Martin. I've been building cars and bikes since I was just a little kid. My team hunts down rusted wrecks. Are we gonna work today, Joe? Or what? We knock out the ugly and put in the cool. And turn these buckets of rust into street art. This is Iron Resurrection. What we have here is a good customer of ours, Dean, 36 Hudson truck. Dean brought this 36 Hudson to us like two and a half years ago, and it is one of the coolest builds we've ever been part of. I just want a nice, low profile. Yeah, it's basically just a cab and fender and just a rotted out bed. When Dean brought this truck in, it should have really gone to the crusher. Right, right. It was terrible shape, but, you know, I guess a 36 size truck's extremely rare. Matter of fact, I've seen no other hot rod in the 36 model. Dean's a really great customer, and unfortunately, he's had some health issues. He's actually a Hudson collector, so we're going to try to give him the best Hudson he's got in his collection. That would be awesome. Yeah, this truck's 85 years old. There's a lot of rust, a lot of years on it. It's going to be a hell of a transformation. Let's uh, do it. Great. Very cool. The 36 Hudson truck's very rare. Dean wants you to customize it make it his own. Great. Hudson had a model called the Terraplane. The Terraplane was very innovative in its day. A lot of design features that were very cool. Every aspect of this truck needs some kind of attention. And it was really in bad shape. It really probably needed to go to the crusher. But Dean wanted to have this in his collection. We have to make our own fenders and running boards. Basically reconstruct everything. Nasty. Well, the original 36 truck, it just had a very square bed. I think the bed didn't even belong on it. The rear fenders looked like they came off a Studebaker or something. I mean, it just looked like a bunch of pieces that didn't belong on the truck. So we have to create something that's going to look really stylish and look like it belongs on there. The most exciting part for me is really the challenge, I guess. And I love the metalwork on anything. And we'll have to make some fenders, we'll have to make a bed, make new running boards. We have to get the cab cut down. Dean doesn't want to chop it too much, but we're going to cut it down just a little bit, get the height out of it. And then the whole back of the cab needs to be restyled. So we have to hand make everything. So those are the things that they're exciting to me. Is that the What's Hudson? that look like? Is that Hudson? Well, <laughs> this is what we want the Hudson to look like. Uh, we got a long way to go, brother. <laughs> you, you talking about the same one sitting under the tree, Joe? Yes or no? Yeah. Joey. Yes or no? <laughs> I think that's a no. <laughs> I like it, dog. Yes it it's a long, drawn-out process. I mean, this thing can be two, two and a half years. And over the last year, we've really been making some headway on it. I've got Kate up, ramping up all the work on it, and I've been making some big gains on it. I almost got this thing knocked out, so it's pretty pretty good. I'm almost done with this giant fender. Pretty much just used the old shell and everything inside is modern and upgraded. The customer wanted electric windows and it's been a little tricky for me. It wasn't made for this specific vehicle, so I'm having to figure out geometry and get everything to work properly the way it's supposed to. K-Dub's helped out along the way transforming this thing, getting all the rust out of here, all new sheet metal. There's a lot of work left to do. We got it sitting on the frame now. Been mocking all the body panels up. Now what I have is a little buck I made. I'm using this to kind of eyeball where the mounting flange of the inner part of the fender is going to go to the bedside. So what we're doing is actually making our mounting flange for the fender. 
this will be the mounting flange, so this will go to the bedside. Once we form it, shape it to the bedside, we'll drill holes in it, we'll do the sheet metal break, and our fender will actually weld to this flange. Hey, come on, kid. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go to 90, Tito, we're gonna go to about, all right about there, bro. Okay, there's our mounting flange. So now what I'm doing is stretching the opposite side, and uh, this gets it to actually lay flat against the bedside. This is the only hard, this is the hardest part of the deal right here. This one's close, man. This is gonna be the peak of the fender, and basically what I wanna try to do is mimic the peak that comes off the factory fender right here, if you notice. The fender's smooth right here, and as it comes right to past it, past the wheel right there, it starts coming to a little peak. So what I want to do is re continue the peak on down to the rear fender, and then put that same design in the rear fender, so it's almost like a continuation of that body line. in a while. Well, the thing with Lee is, and I don't know if you know this, he's got several locations. I was about to say, I know, and I've only been privy to like two. Look at here. What's going on? What's up, stranger? We pull up and there's trailers and cars and expected knickknacks. I don't have my stuff here. It's all well, here's job. the thing. I see things poking out, so I don't know if there's hidden treasures. There's a couple of cars back there, but... What they were looking for, I didn't even have. Wait, what's that boat? You like that boat? Do you like that boat? Uh, it's kind of a project. I haven't really had it in the water yet. They saw my boat that I have and kind of liked it. Well, the cool thing about this is... Don't Joe, worry, be careful. Joe actually had a scarab early on, like, you know, um, I don't know, 15, 20 years a ago. A killer scarab. I mean, here's the thing. No one's ignorant to the fact that when Mandy sees a boat, no matter the size, she is picturing herself in that boat, in said boat, on the water. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. This thing's really clean. So when it's a boat that cool, the sky's the limit. Um, well, I mean, you would sell it. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, well, I mean, what's your number? What do you, what do you got in this thing? You know the thing about working on a car like this 36 Hudson? They don't make parts for them, so first thing it's gonna do is test your metal skills. We've got these fenders to make and it's gonna put us to the task. See now, it's wanting to push it over, Mike. We don't want it crooked. I mean, that's, Joe, that's pretty good right there. Okay, are you there, brother, you there? Yeah, I'm seven and a half and I'm on the bottom. Okay, this is gonna be the peak of the fender, so we're gonna use this as like a backbone. So we're trying to determine our height exactly where we want it. So we'll make some little stanchions and just tack everything in place. We'll reinforce a little bit more. And then we'll start creating our wheel opening. And we'll determine where the fender is going to tie together right here. Pretty damn good. Yeah. I think we just trace that seven and a half all the way down. I think. Yeah. yeah. That's not going to lie. Can't really lie. What do you think you would let the boat go for? I would say the way it is right now, about 1840. 18. 18,000. Yeah, 1,000. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a $65,000 boat. Missing motors, but we're missing motors. This is a long Okay, well, that's, that's a $4,000 motor then. You have to understand what you're gonna put into this. You're still gonna make 30 grand on it when you sell it. I would say it's probably gonna cost about $6,000 in paint supplies. That doesn't count the labor. So would you meet me halfway on that? Would you knock three grand off? Of the Where's halfway? Halfway to where? Well, if we spend $6,000 <laughs> on paint. Oh, okay. Half of that's three. So that means from 18 to 15. I can do that. Would you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I think that's very fair. I think that's really fair. She called me at the right time. You got it? I think I got it, yeah. Right. Hopefully next time I'm going down the ladder off the back of the boat, it'll be in water.
We've been working on the 36 Hudson here for over a year now, making great progress on it. We got one more piece to make, and it's going to take a lot of fab work. You can see we got the uh, buck coming together here, the wire form. We got the peak of the fender established. We got the uh, mounting flange established, and so now we're getting the wheel well arch figured out. So somewhere right there looks pretty sharp. Right there, I think. Here we go. We'll tack that in place. All right. Well, so what we have is our metal buck finished up. Oh, that's it, finished up. Look at it. And it's kind of like the exoskeleton for the fender. So we'll join this sheet metal right in the middle of this section right here and uh, weld it. And that'll give us a little platform to weld against. Now that we have all this ready to go and, and braced, we'll start making the skins. And then once everything's all welded and skinned, we'll cut this exoskeleton away and then we'll have our fender. And we'll be able to metal finish, we'll be able to planish, get everything smooth, grind out the welds, and make it look like a one-piece fender. So here's what we're going to do, Peter. We're going to come in here. So now we'll start making a cardboard template and uh, getting it to fit each little section. We know this has an arch here. And then we got to keep the body right here. So we know we got to shrink a little right here, shrink right here. Then we'll put our shrink marks in kind of where we got the marker on the metal. We'll start there. And we'll just start seeing if we can get to a little lax on our, on our buck, you know. Get your uh, ear gear on, get up. We're going to shrink it down in here. Yeah, three or four inches in. See where we're at. And then we'll get the sides. It looks really crude. Yeah, let's start with it in here. Out. Walk it in on that die. Walk it in the best you can and walk it out. And when you come out, slowly kind of pull it down. Yeah, just hammer down on it, bro. Give it a hell. put each one in and when it's done hopefully it looks good i have to be uh, pretty careful and take my time and make sure my cuts are straight i have to i'm gonna have to remake this whole piece so i'm just gonna take my time make sure all my stuff is nice and straight so what i'm putting these vents in i'm just copying the original what was in the original side panels but it's just gonna help kind of vent some of the heat out of the hood and it makes it look good. It's not just a solid piece right there. Well, so once again, I sent Shag and Amanda out to look for some car parts. What in the, do we gotta, what are, we, are we gonna paint this? And lo and behold, they come home with this beautiful scarab hook. And we bought it. We bought it? We bought it. Oh, we, we, we. The, the drives are missing. I mean, there was a couple things missing. Like, the propulsion. How can we afford this? We got a smoking deal on this thing. You hear that, Jose? Lee! 
Lee had it. Lee? And this is just one of those boats that I could not walk away from. I mean, this boat looks like it came out of the early 90s. Nobody's ever seen Joe Martin paint a 40-foot boat. Hang on, because it'll be right now when it gets done with it. It won't be no, nothing dated about the boat. It is in a great shape. Look at it down here, Joe. This ain't clean as a whistle. To Mandy. You guys see us down there? Is that a thank you, or is that a... Wow. Hey, there's no motors in here, Mike. No. We got some work to do, man, but what a great starting spot. Huh? I wasn't uh, seized by the government at one time, was it? It might have been. So you're happy? I can't, I can't even believe it. Yay! I just can't even believe it. Well, I'm ready to roll. Let's, let's go. Let's uh, roll. When Dean dropped off the carcass of a Hudson that was supposed to be our starting point, half of the shop here looked at Joe like he was crazy for taking this build on. It's a big commitment on the customer's part. This truck means a lot to Dean, and we're going to make it happen. They do want to, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, you're a bad dude, Joe. Oh, you're a bad man. So, this is coming along great. Now that we've got our fitter done, we're actually build up a running board. And Caleb's got a template made, so we're going to break it, put a styling bead in it. Break it like that. So, we need to run this. Let's mark this off, Kato. Yeah. So, now we'll put the bead detail in there, and we'll get it on here, and hopefully, we'll get it lined up. This thing's gonna be pretty trick, so we can't wait to get this thing off the stand down on the ground, get it kind of cleaned up so we can take a look at it. Sink it down, Kato. Give it hell, brother. We got the uh, boat pulled up here, and we're gonna start getting it tore down, and Abe's gonna do all the work, get everything prepped. There's a lot of things we want to take off. We're gonna take this, this platform off the back. We gotta take all this, you know, disassemble all this stuff. Get our wing off there. Just basically strip it down, prep it, and we'll start getting some color on. It's way better when you get those colors off. Getting some of the 90s sanded off of it. Golly. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a pretty good bead. Oh, that was good. All right, Kato. So we're just adjusting the bike right now, just to get the band just right. Let's try it, Kato. <laughs> Damn. <laughs>
It was kind of square back here. He just fell in love with, you know, the lines of the car. The bed's handmade. Everything's pretty much handmade on it. And one of the last things we did was shape these fenders by hand. Oh, it is great. It is just wicked looking. I mean, it has got some lines on it that is just unbelievable. Just won't drive it, you know. <laughs> Almost ready for some pain on this thing. Ain't getting close. The way you live, I mean, unbelievable. He's been wanting it for a long time. It's, it's really going to be, you know, it's going to really be hard to film, you know, for him. But I'm glad he's going to get to see it. It's just really pretty. And now we're going to figure out our interior colors, our ex exterior colors. And from that point, we can start dialing in what we're going to do for paint scheme and get the interior finished up. So with this 36 Hudson truck, we got most of the uh, metal finishing done. Now it's on to the paint stage. Right now, I've already roughed in the panel, metal finish. This is kind of the beginning of the body work. Uh, from here on out, everything is done by hand. It'll be, you know, put together and taken apart multiple times. But just to ensure that fitment is right where it needs to be and that basically on final assembly, when we go to put the car together, it just falls together. Tommy gets here 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning. Works till 4 or 5. And I mean, you don't even see him. He's just in there thrashing. Right now, I'm just getting good fitment on the fender, shaping the metal a little bit better. So when it rests on the body, it's at ease. There's no pressure underneath it. Nothing's binding or pulling one way or the other, which is how you want any panel to fit. You know, you want it to just basically fall on. Man, we just lock him in that room, let him go. Uh, well, it's a 36 Hudson and it's old. What's cool is that um, it's being brought back to life, giving a new life with modern components and just the underside, the chassis, and then just coilover shocks. And so you get a modern ride out of something that, you know, is 60 plus years old. Just uh, keep rolling on, sling them up, burning wire. Once you get paint on it, or even once you're ready to paint, you're pretty much at the finish line. I mean, all the hard work is done, which, you know, when I finally get to the point where I'm actually painting, it's actually enjoyable. You know, some people think it's work, but to me, it's like I get to see the finished product. It's driving me oh, yeah. proud, Joe. Look at that, man. Yeah, transition. Well, Dean, he'll be excited, man. I hope so. So we got to get everybody's ass in gear, get this thing finished up. Get that nice line right there. Oh, man. I want yeah. that line right there. Yeah. To match everything that's on the fenders and on the edge of the bed. Mm -hmm. So every time you hit a corner, it looks like you're looking at the same, yeah, exactly. same kind of style line. Just over the top right here, man. Two years ago when I saw this, man, I wasn't scared. I knew yeah. I wanted this truck. In fact, for two years, I told you I want that truck. Oh, I, I know, man. That truck. Well, here it is, brother. Here we are. Here. This morning, I got the motor and the transmission for the Hudson. Uh, the motor and trans will go a gold color, so we're going to match the same color that we're using on the wheels of the car. After I spray it this afternoon sometime, later on this evening probably, um, it'll be ready to be bolted together and uh, we can put it in the chassis. Brian got the boat primed and then white base. All the colors are going to base off this white. So now what I'm doing is I'm just getting some of my colors I'm figuring out for this design. Put some black on there, some silver and orange. Just kind of complement the lines of the boat. So it's going to do this cool scallop kind of design. So we we'll put some modern colors on there, you know, a modern kind of a paint scheme. And one thing I want to add on there too, I'm going to do the Scarab logo on here. The boat's a well-crown Scarab. That was their model of their offshore power boat. The Scarab's going to be 
you know, it's just kind of a cool symbol. It's always been an iconic symbol for custom paint, and it's been a symbol on this boat, too. So I thought mixing the two on there is going to be really cool. It would look right at home. in there. I think it's going to go really good with the uh, color combo of this boat. I thought about putting the, putting the lettering back on the boat. I just don't want to put the lettering on or get too busy. Even though a lot of boats are really busy and crazy colored, I want to leave it kind of clean. And uh, but I think this will scare Beetle. will speak for itself. Come forward, brother. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come forward. Whoa. Boy, John, this is up. 
Yeah, I'm a little bit. Oh, yeah. I think we're good back here. Just on the transmission anyway. I mean, it's... Along with the motor, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and bolt the transmission. We'll put the whole drivetrain in, the motor and training assembly. We'll put that in, and then we'll get that bolted in. Of course, the rear end's already in, like I said, it's a roller. So, we put the drive shaft in, and your drivetrain's done. So, it makes it a lot easier. When you the motor dude. that came out of this thing. Ooh. Oh, you should have seen the whole thing before we started, DJ. Oh, I saw the pictures. Oh, man, that looks good, boy. Can you almost got a roller. Got a motor in there. Been a long time coming. 27 months, man. Man. I'm a numbers guy, Joe. I'm gonna keep track of that. Yeah, we should uh, quit uh, reminding me, Mike. But. All right. Come on out, Bellas. We received a phone call this week from Jimmy, Dean's brother. Really bad news. Dean has passed away. I mean, it just kind of took the wind out of our sails. The family is honoring Dean's wishes which were to finish the truck no matter what. You know, we're finishing it like Dean's still here, so. There's probably going to be a lot of tears shed, but we're going to make sure that we finish this truck and it's a knockout. Don't be bad, man. Isn't that cool? I think it's one of the things that made him happy is coming to see the progress of his truck. Kind of inspires us a little bit more to go ahead and put everything we got into this Hudson and get it really nice where he'd be proud of it. It's just kind of a, something we're thinking about, Dean. It'd be like a, a natural a natural finish on it. That's what Dean wanted, man. That's a good choice. I agree with him on that one. Yeah. Well, hopefully when we finish this 36 Hudson, Dean will be looking down. Taking a lot of pride in it. Amen. Hoping he would have approved of it. So we got a big day today. Got our Hudson sitting here, got the motor in, got all the drivetrain in, wheels on, Tommy's got everything painted, so now we get to assemble. Man, we better get a bucket and a mop for this paint job. I get the cab on there. Oh, we're gonna go in the back and walk forward and just drop it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I saw Brian pick this up by himself. Basically, everything centers off of the cab. It ain't that heavy. One, two, three, go. There we go, see? Definitely don't want to scratch anything. Right there on that front pedestal. Keep going forward, come our way. I'm gonna put a killer paint job on the thing, so we do not want to scratch it. Come, Come forward on your side, Mike. All right, right there. Yeah. Woo! That close to the train, yeah, is it? it, it but it, it's it's clear. I need to come my, over my way. Uh, yeah, something's drifting you. Well, hold just... on. We can't slide it or we'll start losing the washer, so we got to pick it up. We're going to pick it up, Tommy. Okay. Ready? 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 Slow down, Turbo. It's been that easy. Look at that reflection of that motor there. Are you having a flashback when we first drug it in here? Or oh, man. I am. You can see through right here and see through everything. Then when I get the doors on, this door is light. So you're going to hold the back mic? I guess I'm going to hold something. You're actually holding it up because I'm about ready to let go of it, okay? How's this feel, Mike? That's a big step. You've been working on this thing for a long time. All I know that, that it was a real pain in the ass, but now that it's all done, it's about as cool as you can get. Still looking good up here, Tommy. Everything is money, man. Other vehicles, you know, they'll kind of twist and turn. This thing is so solid. It's absurd. I mean, just the substructure and the framing underneath the cab. This thing's built like a tank. This is probably one of the biggest challenges I've done in probably the last 20 years. Uh, Joe, he's been working on our fun in the sun rig here. It's a big, long, white boat. He's put his paint on it. It's looking cool already, but I can't wait to get it in the sun and really see it. Yes, we just got all the color on the thing. Just got this final clear coat on here. And uh, we're going to right unwrap it and see how this thing looks. All right, it's time to shine. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's been a long time. It's been too long, right? It's been a long time since we've seen 38 foot of anything that's going to go on the water. Now, next time I said, I told you, let's just go to the lake. We can do it for real, right? Man. You know, there's a lot of color, but it's still done in, in a really tasteful way. And it's just going to be an attention grabber on the lake. It's long and sleek and cool. Yeah. It's like one big invitation <laughs> to the water. It kind of is, isn't it? Yes. This thing is gorgeous. It looks a lot different outside, doesn't it? Oh, man. You know, he kind of knocked the 80s out of it and brought it right up to date. And even my little wing he took off of there and i have to agree with him the boat looks a lot sleeker without it i mean the scarab is just right in the right spot and then you have this clean lines up here and all the color oh my god it's beautiful so what kind of motors are y'all putting on this thing 
But to big block Chevy's 502s. Awesome. So it'll be a nice mild cruiser motor. Yeah. It'll ride like uh, like a Cadillac. Man. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Yep. What's it gonna take to get this thing wrapped up and let's get it on the lake? Well, we just gotta assemble it and then uh, buff a little bit, put the motors in, put the drives on. Awesome. Let's get it He's done. Gonna have to hang loose, blood. Just hang loose, blood. Just hang loose. Just hang loose. Just hang loose. Just hang loose. You know what time it is? Bedtime. Bedtime. Keep hope. Oh. No. The bed's cutting buffed, and we're basically ready to, to put it on the frame. Lay it down. Let's get it down. We're going to lay this on there today. Get this shimmed up. Exactly where it needs to be. And I can see me losing a finger on this gear. Because I know how tight it is to the frame. We're going to hang the rear fenders. You know, get them out of danger's way. You got to come, come. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Cab's on, door's on. Chad's been plumbing it up. We need to go back and down at the back. Yeah. From here on out, man, we're putting stuff together. Hey, is there some stuff with the roll pan area where you got to go down and fall? Oh, yeah, you got, you're clear. Much. Hey, that's close, fellas. It's rather light, to be honest with you. It's lightweight. Gonna be coming back just a little bit. Tell me where I'm at, man. Right there. I'm just kind of hold it out. I'm gonna get. This I'm gonna give you a finger gap. What is this probably gonna be too? Drop it down a little bit. Just but the real big thing about this truck was the rear fenders on it. It's almost hard to explain how well they turned out. Ugh. Damn! Look at that, boy. Uh -huh. Wow. Right. Tommy, man. He's got a He's shining just like the truck. Damn, man. I'll tell you what, Joe. If that's not your Huckleberry, you're weird. If that's not your Huckleberry, you're weird. You're weird. Yeah, I think so, man. You know, Tommy put the finishing touch on it, and this thing's just absolutely beautiful. The one thing about putting a, the wood in a bed of the truck, obviously after it's painted and everything, is, is scratching the bed. So we, we tape the ends of the, the bed and the front of the bed and stuff to hopefully keep us from scratching anything. We're going to do the best we can. Easy peasy. I'm going to have to get in there and wipe some stuff down. And I won't pull the tape off that and look at it, but I don't want to pull it off if the truck's finished, you know what I mean? Come on, Mike. Joe, you want to take a look? See? What do you think, Joe? That bit with my. Boy, he's got it wooded up. Well, I couldn't stand it. I had to pull the tape off at least one of them. It looks real good. I mean, you can't haul nothing in the back of it, but it sure looks good. Yeah, that's a no haul bed right here. So yeah. Perfect color, man, for that ring beard. I think so. All natural. In my mind's eye, I can see things finished out way before they're done. You know, I know what it's going to look like because my hands have been on this vehicle for hundreds of hours. And it's always cool to like when you get it to that one point that people actually start seeing what you, I've seen in my head. They're seeing it with their eyes. That's when things start to come together. And just like, you know, when me and Chad were assembling it, you know, I mean, all these parts were, you know, the truck was in pieces. You know, for a while, while all these things were getting painted, I knew exactly how they were going to fit back on. You know, everything was going to mesh, everything, the gaps, the lines, the fitment. It was all because, you know, you go through these various steps throughout the process to ensure that when you get back to that assembly part of, it, you know, the, the home stretch, it all comes together, falls together. It needs to roll inward. Okay. It's just like a dream come true. Been a lot of nightmares to this dream, but now we're out of the nightmare stage and we're seeing the light at the end of the dream tunnel. Yeah. Throwing some oil on the motor so we can fire this thing up, make sure everything's good to go. DJ's been working all night trying to fire up this Hudson, and uh, I think he found some wires that were crossed, so hopefully we'll get ready to try it out, and uh, hopefully this thing will bust off. Should work. It's clear. Yeah, see there? Yeah. 
Well, I mean, that's the most rewarding thing, really, is... You know, if they think Dean would approve, that's good. And I think Joe loves the truck just as much as my brother did. We're scared of driving on this dirty driveway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you guys probably liable to go put some bales of hay in the back or something. No, no, <laughs> uh, no, no. I don't think Dean be, be coming from back from the grave. He'll come back from the grave. Yeah, yeah he sure will. And right now, his future is to show it, you know, because uh, that's what Dean would have wanted. That's what he wanted more than anything in the world. So, wish he was here. But anyway, we're here to take up the ball for him. And... I'm usually left alone and nobody tries to talk to me all day. Yeah, so I just put my earbuds in and do my thing. But, you know, sometimes it's, it's lonely. You know, it's just you and your tools and your and your thoughts and anything from shooting squirrels to, you know, cop chases and who knows. He drinks different coffee than I drink in the morning, I promise you. Hudson truck. Dean brought this 36 Hudson to us 
like two and a half years ago, and it is one of the coolest builds we've ever been part of. I just want a nice, low profile. Yeah, it's basically just a cab and fender and just a rotted out bed. When Dean brought this truck in, it should have really gone to the crusher. Right, right. It was terrible shape, but, you know, I guess a 36 size truck's extremely rare. Matter of fact, I've seen no other hot rod in the 36 model. Dean's a really great customer, and unfortunately, he's had some health issues. He's actually a Hudson collector, so we're going to try to give him the best Hudson he's got in his collection. That would be awesome. You know, this truck's 85 years old. There's a lot of rust, a lot of years on it. It's going to be a hell of a transformation. Let's uh, do it. Great. Very cool. The 36 Hudson trucks are very rare. Dean wants you to customize it and make it his own. Oh, freak. Hudson had a model called the Terraplane. The Terraplane was very innovative in its day. A lot of design features that were very cool. Every aspect of this truck needs some kind of attention. And it was really in bad shape. It really probably needed to go to the crusher. But Dean wanted to have this in his collection. We had to make our fenders and running boards. Basically reconstruct everything. Nasty. Well, the original 36 truck, it just had a very square bed. I think the bed didn't even belong on it. The rear fenders looked like they came off a Studebaker or something. I mean, it just looked like a bunch of pieces that didn't belong on the truck. So we have to create something that's going to look really stylish and look like it belongs on there. The most exciting part for me is really the challenge, I guess. And I love the metalwork on anything. And we'll have to make some fenders. We'll have to make a bed, make new running boards. We'll have to get the cab cut down. Dean doesn't want to chop it too much, but we're going to cut it down just a little bit, get the height out of it. And then the whole back of the cab needs to be restyled. So we have to hand make everything. So those are the things that they're exciting to me. Is that What's that look like? Is that a Hudson? Well, this is, <laughs> this is what we want the Hudson to look like. Uh, we got a long way to go, brother. <laughs> you, you talking about the same one sitting under the tree, Joe? Yes or no? Yeah. Joey. Yes or no? <laughs> I think that's a no. <laughs> I like it, dog. Yes, it's a long, drawn-out process. I mean, this thing can be two, two and a half years. And over the last year, we've really been making some headway on it. I've got Kate up, ramping up all the work on it, and uh, we're making some big gains on it. I almost got this thing knocked out, so it's pretty... Pretty good. I'm almost done with this giant fender. Pretty much just used the old shell and everything inside is modern and upgraded. The customer wanted electric windows and it's been a little tricky for me. It wasn't made for this specific vehicle.